Welcome to the Cyber Chronicles. My name is Brian Stevenson and I will be your host. This week you've got a very exciting episode as always, things going on in the cybersecurity world. We've got a Pentagon breach, we've got an SSH flaw, we've got an iPhone bug that allows people to access your private photos, and we got about 62%, not a lot, but 62% of all internet sites are going to be vulnerable to hacks here coming in about 10 weeks if they don't do an update or a patch. And we have 19 records of states of voter records being sold on the dark web. So let's get started. Okay, coming into our fifth most popular article shared across the internet last week was a Pentagon breach compromised up to 30,000 workers. And it may go higher than that, according to a source internally. Um, kind of interesting given the fact that just a week ago, the GO. A had announced a report the Department of Defense made progress in securing the network, but is falling far short in protecting its weapon systems. And then within a week, they have a breach. And of course, they announce these things on Fridays because they hope no one will notice. But cybersecurity news, we do notice at the Cyber Chronicle. So that's our fifth most popular article on egadget.com. We'll have the link shared below. Okay, the fourth most shared article of the week comes to us from our friends over at the Hacker news um, library ssh flaw allows hackers to take over the servers without a password it's a four-year-old vulnerability they just put a cve out on it of uh 10933 if you know what that is if you don't you're probably not in security but they just had a cve announce the vulnerability of the code um before you get too concerned github did this say they have a patch they've updated um, for their servers so they're not vulnerable as well as um um, can apply it to anybody who's using that as a uh, open source way for authentication. They did research though that it did show there's about 6,500 interfacing facing servers that could be impacted by the use of the library um, SHJ from GitHub. Um, so if you have not done so and you're using that as an open source tool, go to GitHub and get the latest patch update. That was our fourth most shared article of the week. Okay, the third most shared article of the week comes to us from the Hacker News again. A new iPhone bug shows anyone with access to, can get access to your private photos. Uh, before you get too concerned, they do have to have physical access to your device for this to do, uh, to access your photos. They can take this hack and even with your system locked, they can bypass the iPhone lock screen to access photos. They walk through the steps, there's about 10 steps that you need to take. Um, to do this, Jose Rodriguez, a Spanish amateur security researcher, detected the bug in the iOS 12 in September, and they just published it out on um, out on the Hacker News. You can also go to settings and uh, and patch this thing um, or secure your thing through Siri uh, without this hack being uh, applicable until Apple does find a patch, which they do not have a patch for it yet, to physically block people that know how to do that if they have physical access to your phone. So let's move on to our second most popular story of the week. Okay, our second most popular article of the week comes to us from ZDNet, a uh, great website, go to that every day. Um, it talks about PHP. PHP, if you're not aware, is the operating system uh, that a lot of uh, websites use to code their, their, their programs uh, WordPress uses it, just a ton of different sites use it. And if people are still using PHP in a 5X version, um, they're going to stop receiving security updates, which means they could be exposing themselves to underlying security risks if a hacker finds a hole in PHP 5 or below. If you have a website, it's very easy to update your PHP. Just call your hosting provider if you don't know how to do it, but usually if you just go to uh, your controls, so you can update, and you should always update patch updates, including PHP, to make sure you have the latest security um, patches to make sure your website is secure. Uh, it's just a very simple thing to do, but apparently 62% of websites out on the internet today are still running a version that uh, is very old. So if you have an old website out there, call your hosting provider, make sure that you have the latest PHP update. Also back up your site because your latest PHP may cause some disruption of your linkage and everything else. Uh, which could take down your site. So uh, just be, be prepared, but this is something that goes back to the fundamentals. Patch frequently, patch always. 
Okay, as always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Focus Point Technologies, for making this podcast possible. I'd also like to do a shout-out to Safe Breach. Safe Breach, latest uh, episode we have out on our Focus Point website, talks about the vendor showcase. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. We've got about 2,100 views so far, and the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Also, this week, in, if you're in the Minneapolis area, we're going to the Cybersecurity Summit. We'll be at booth 113. So, again, thank our sponsor. Here's a little message from... Focus Point Technologies is a woman-owned cybersecurity solutions provider. We are headquartered in Minnesota and we have a unique approach. Our Security Technology Optimization Program, or STOP as we like to call it, takes a look at unused and overlapping functionality in the tool sets that you already own with the goal of lessening the number of vendors in your environment and saving your organization money. Give us a call at 651-330-5521. Okay, our number one shared most article of the week comes again to us from Znet. U.S. records, voter records from 19 states are being sold on the hacker forums on the dark web for up to $42,000, $200. You can get up to 35 million records. These records include the names of the people, your voting history, other voter-related information, your physical address, your phone number, um, and so that's interesting. The lake itself was uh, suggested in a forum that it could have been done by the robust scent incident that occurred in June. But the person who's selling the voter records claims the data is refreshed every Monday of every week, suggesting that either it has access to compromised servers or a way to receive continue updates on voter records as they get updated to these servers. So uh, there's our democracy at work. That was our number one most shared article of the week. Okay, at this point, we normally stop the, the cybersecurity news because we covered the top five articles shared across the, the Internet. But this just came out on Saturday here that's going to hit the news. I love it. They publish these things on Saturday because they hope that it gets buried in the news. The U.S. Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services have been breached. 75,000 people affected um, that activity that occurred. The, the CMS is responding to suspicious activity in the agent and broken exchange portal. Earlier this week, CMS detected anomalous behavior at the Federal Facility Exchange, or FFE, direct enrollment for agents and brokers. At this time, we believe approximately 75,000 individual uh, files were accessed. goes again that that, uh, we're still not taking cybersecurity seriously. Um, I happen to be in the great state of Minnesota, where we apply 2% of our IT budget to security, which is pitiful. Um, Average states apply about 10%, but that's my own state. Um, and even the federal government, again, yet on a Saturday, 75,000 individual Medicare records were affected. Thanks. For- so that's it for this week's Cyber Chronicles episode ending October 20th. We hope you enjoyed the episode. We hope you subscribe. As always, leave your comments and views down below. And we will hope to see you next week on the Cyber Chronicles. Take care.